such a majumdar and our warm welcome to our special guest georgia maneta today we are here to observe world aids day it's really a very significant day in our society and uh, as we all know that uh, this aids day is very much important for especially for our students and our young generation just to send them this message that uh, how we can uh, protect ourselves from this kind of endemic and uh, this kind of uh, non curable disease only a restrained lifestyle can help us to protect and to make our life secured and i'm sure that today i we will listen to so many new and modern things from our honorable guests from our honorable speakers and i'm sure that uh, this program this uh, observation of world aids day through participation of of all our colleagues and students will be a memorable one and we will be enriched a lot and it will be a successful one now i would like to request organizers of science club and iqsc to carry on the program thank you very much Devushmita, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, please proceed on the program. A very good evening to all the honorable speakers, respected principal ma'am, IQAC coordinator, professors, and my dear friends. It is our distinct pleasure and privilege to host you today as we welcome distinguished guests and academists this is truly an inclusive discussion welcome to observance of world aids day organized by science club of noroshingo dotto college we believe that through these awareness programs we can shine a spotlight on preventing the spread of aids hiv or aids has become one of the most devastating syndrome humanity has ever faced young people are particularly vulnerable to hiv infection because of the physical psychological social and economic attributes of adolescence so we the young generation have come forward to spread awareness and gain knowledge about aids we are really thankful to all the speakers for joining with us and sharing their valuable time we would extend our heartiest gratitude to our principal ma'am dr shoma bondhopadhyay for her inspiration guidance and constant encouragement towards students that has led to organizing such enlightening programs we also thank our science club secretary iqac coordinator and all the organizers of this event for their constant support and guidance now i request our respected secretary of science club professor shubhrato basu to say a few words thank you devashmita and thank you all honorable guest speaker and speakers all and thank you our principal ma'am who is always inspired us to proceed on to uh, to any sort of good ventures about aids if i want to say this is one day we are meeting in here 
that is a perfect opportunity for us to we can unite worldwide people to fight against hiv and show our support for people living with hiv as well as we remember those people who have died due to hiv related illness why we are going through why we are thinking this is so vulnerable because you see the data provided by who that in 2020 only a uh, total estimated people living with hiv it started before 3.77 crores total people living and 6 lakhs 80000 people died only in 2020 so this is a alarming figure that's why we are sitting together here and every year we are getting some theme on aids on 1st december there are different sort of themes are shown here like this year theme is special end inequalities and aids so if inequalities goes so aids will be gone by this way some other themes are also there like in the year of in the year of uh, different years in the year of 19 to 20 and 19 ending the hiv epidemic community by community in 20 it was ending the hiv aids resilience and impact by this way different themes every year we get so we will be concentrating on this year theme end inequalities and end aids objective of this program is basically to guide members for prevent of aids prevention of aids awareness should be created for the use of anti anti retroviral therapy art method it is called in medical science to create awareness on testing counseling is very much required and testing is also very much required to inspire school and college students to contribute to the campaign for elimination of aids all these objectives um, uh, along with these objectives i can conclude with the main purpose the main purpose for celebrating world aids day every year is to build new and effective policies and program to strengthen the system of health and also to increase the capacity of health health sector towards hiv or aids thank you very much over to devushmita thank you sir I am privileged to introduce you to the guest speakers we have among us. A hearty welcome to Dr. Obhijit Bokshi. Dr. Bokshi completed his MBBS degree from Medical College Kolkata and worked at various departments of government medical colleges. He earned a specialization in ophthalmology from Center of Excellence Regional Institute of Ophthalmology Medical College Kolkata. and later settled in general and laparoscopic surgery he was awarded the masters of surgery from medical college and is a fellow of laparoscopic surgeons of india throughout his career he served government of west bengal presently he is a teacher in west bengal medical education service acting as a faculty at calcutta national medical college please join me in welcoming dr bokshi Thank you, Doctor, for joining with us. I request Doctor Bokshi to continue with his speech. Hello. 
Yes, you are audible, Dr. Bokshi. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm privileged to be here as a part of your uh, this scientific program on World AIDS Day. It started, uh, uh, the, the World Health Organization started um, celebrating this day since 1988, actually. So, well, I'm here to um, say a few words about clinical aspects of AIDS and its prevention, mostly. Uh, we, as we all know that uh, HIV is a virus. There are two subtypes, one and two, uh, which belong to retrovirus family. And the transmission is usually sexual or uh, non-sexual. Uh, HIV is caused by this human immun immunodeficiency virus, and the AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So it consists of various uh, diseases affecting different organs and the mortality is almost 100%. Without treatment, a person will die in 11 years actually. Uh, the number of uh, deaths across the world is alarming and we should all stand by. And the, this day is actually celebrated to show, show solidarity. Uh, to the HIV positive people across the world. Uh, now, next slide, please. It, uh, the, this virus actually weakens the immune systems and increases the risk of infection. And uh, as I told you, uh, uh, apart from sexual um, transmission, there are non-sexual ways like blood contacts or any medical surgical procedures or during childbirth, during pregnancy, breastfeeding, middle sharing, these are all can transmit this virus. But we must know that must know that the saliva, tears and sweats, they don't transmit this virus. Uh, next slide. Uh, as I told you, uh, AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and it weakens our um, immune system and uh, the virus causes deficiency of CD4 plus T cells in the immune system and thereby causing different diseases. Uh, next. Okay, uh, next one. So, HIV is common worldwide and HIV-1. I told you uh, there are two viruses, one and two. Are the same route of transmission and uh, two is mostly uh, found in West Africa and different other zones. Now, when a patient, uh, stick to this slide please, stay here. Uh, now, when a patient get infected by this virus, by sexual or non-sexual way, there is three phases of infection actually regarding the clinical aspect. Firstly, there will be either no symptom or there may be some prodromal phase like flu-like symptoms or like rash, uh, neuropathy, fever of unknown origin. This happens for one to two weeks actually. Then the person will remain symptom fit free for a prolonged period, which is called a latent period. He may develop few lymphadenopathy. And later, when the CD4 plus T cells uh, drops down, there occurs different diseases. Opportunistic infections occurs, uh, weight loss, diarrhea. It can cause meningitis. It can cause retinitis. It can cause encephalitis. Uh, there may be overwhelming tuberculosis. There may be new, different pneumonias, mostly caused by the pneumocystis carini. There may be cancers, some Kaposi's, viral induced cancers, like Kaposi's cancers, Kaposi's sarcoma, uh, different other lymphomas, and uh, uh, cancer, uh, cervical cancers, these all can 
occur during these phase and this is actually when a person develops this phase these diseases then he is actually termed as aids he is suffering from aids a hiv positive patient may not be suffering from aids at, until a certain time of uh, a certain time actually and there are uh, two other types of uh, uh, two other types of um, uh, patients which are called long term non progressors where the t4 cells remain in higher concentration and another one is elite controllers where you don't detect or very low viral load remains without treatment so these those are fortunate people actually uh, so therefore we get actually three phase one is the prodromal phase the uh, phase of getting infection then a symptom free phase and then the overwhelming aids now uh, let's come to next slide now what is the testing protocol after you get exposed to these exposed to these aids uh, first is once you get exposed uh, if you know at all in case of this blood contacts or needle prick or uh, once a child is born to a hiv positive mother the first is at the very beginning then at 6 weeks then at 3 months then at 6 months this is the testing protocol now regarding prevention we all have to take precaution regarding safe sex use of condom using vaginal gel but spermicidal gel is not protective Uh, there was a theory that circumcision may help to get rid of this infection but it is not uh, very well documented effective family planning services that is most important and educating the children educating the i mean school going edu edu say uh, i mean i want to say sexual education at at least school school level school and college these are the way by which we can uh, increase the uh, education among the common people as well as the students so that people get aware that these are the way by which we can prevent transmission of sex transmission of hiv uh we have to uh, screen as we all know we have to uh, screen all the blood products and blood and we have to follow universal precaution to stop hiv transmission uh, next slide and we also have to treat all stds also uh, Uh, next these are this is the natural course of the disease uh, as we have already mentioned about this sero conversion then asymptomatic symptomatic and full blown aids these are these stages next uh, i have already mentioned this opportunity infection occurs later when the viral load is very high the cd4 count uh, lessons next next slide and now what are the test what are the test uh, firstly we do a screening test that is elisa enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and if uh, any of the uh, hiv 1 or 2 any of the category remain reactive then we have to confirm it by western blot or polymerase chain reaction or immunofluorescent assay uh, we can also go for assay for p24 antigen uh, now there are two other categories uh, that is one is pre exposure profile axis we uh, regarding this uh, uh, prevention of transmission 
we can actually give some profile access to the people who are at risk of high risk of getting hiv infection like a couple uh, of with one positive one hiv positive the other partner is negative then we have to give him or her uh, pre exposure profile access uh, for the partners for the high risk people for young africans and for iv drug users another one is post exposure after you get exposed to a uh, needle prick or in case of sexual assault uh firstly you have to rush, rush to any hospital uh, let me share this information that every hospital emergency has a post exposure profile access uh treatment um, uh, tablets actually uh it is available with antiretrovirals as the same men mentioned consisting of girovudin tenofovir and other other medicines this post exposure multiple drug treatment uh the tablets are available at all hospital emergency and we have to take it as soon as possible and if the patient uh, i mean if the exposure is actually positive if you uh, uh, the after the i'm an accidental exposure to some blood product if the person's blood person is i'm uh, an whose blood has uh, come to my contact actually if he is um, hiv positive then we have to take it for four weeks at least with the uh, testing protocol as i mentioned zero three weeks uh, three and six months and um, we have to take it as soon as possible and we have to recheck his blood so that we become doubly sure that whether uh, the exposure is actually positive or not if it is positive then for four weeks if it is negative then we have to stop taking the drugs another thing is vertical transmission uh, i have already mentioned this uh, slide that uh, hiv can affect the brain gut heart and other systems i have already mentioned uh, please pass on uh, vertical transmission is when a mother who is hiv positive is transmitting the disease or the virus to his her child actually in that case we have to give antiviral therapy to the mother during pregnancy and after childbirth we have to promote bottle feeding if feasible we should avoid breastfeeding because breast milk can transmit hiv virus if it is not feasible to stop exclusive breastfeeding uh, which is actually the norm for normal people but in hiv positive mother if we can we uh, if uh, bottle feeding uh, i mean exclusive breastfeeding cannot be stopped then we have to continue breastfeeding with the child being given the anti retroviral profile axis and cuba is the first country in 2015 to stop this vertical transmission they have been able to stop it lastly vaccines are not yet approved for treatment purpose actually nutritious diet micronutrients vitamins these are all required and there are treatment which is called art anti retroviral therapy for the hiv positive patients which is highly active it is now called h double a r t highly active anti retroviral therapy consisting of different drugs in different combinations and only few get cured till death maybe in less than 10 people i don't know very few people get cured rest of the people they actually <clears throat> remain in controlled symptoms very um, uh, till very late actually And that is uh, uh, the actual scenario for hiv so we have we all have to be very careful 
uh, to stop transmission because prevention can actually help us fight this disease. So we can come to the summary that uh, HIV people are vulnerable to opportunistic infections and it's a chronic viral with no known cure and without treatment it will progress to AIDS and patient will eventually die. Uh, next slide. And it is actually endemic all over the world. It started from Africa and then uh, become worldwide. Uh, next one, please. So, I already mentioned these points that HIV positive women who are pregnant, they can transmit it and we have to be very careful to stop this particle transmission. Next one. Thank you and it is, this is HIV, AIDS days, uh, World Health AIDS days observed by all United Nations uh, countries in 1st December to show solidarity to the HIV positive patients and AIDS patients. Thank you. Thank you, doctor, for enlightening us with that informative presentation and lecture. We are waiting for a special guest speaker from Greece, Mrs. Georgia Maneta, who will be joining us in a short while. We also have a presentation of posters by our students. Please do not leave the program. We appreciate your patience. A warm welcome to Dr. Shobhushachi Mujunga. He graduated with B.Sc. Honours Degree in Zoology from Ramkrishna Mission Vivekananda Sanitary College, Rahara. Then completed his Master's in Marine Science from University of Calcutta. Later, he earned a doctorate degree from the same university in Ecology and Taxonomy. He was awarded the Master of Arts in Education from University of Kulani. He published 26 research papers in various national and international journals and also presented research papers in 19 national and international seminars. He also supervised a PhD thesis and acted as guest faculty in Vidyasagar University and West Bengal University of Fisheries and Animal Sciences. He is presently associated in West Bengal State University, Barashat, as guest faculty. He was selected through global competition and was awarded international leadership in the education program sponsored by USA and IREX. He also represented India in the Genesis program at Japan 2012. Dr. Shobhushachi Mojumdar is presently discharging his duties as the country head of Global Educators Initiative for Sustainable Transformation, International Foundation, India Chapter, and President GEIST Global. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mojumdar. We are grateful to have you with us, sir. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Mojumdar for his speech. Thank you, Devasmita, for your kind introduction. Uh, I'm greatly privileged and honored to be a part of this wonderful program that is associated with this commemoration of the World AIDS Day. As rightly told by Professor Subrata Kuma Basu about the about its necessity of having a single out a single day for a particular program international days and to put solidarity for the affected HIV affected people and as a result I think that this is a great opportunity to show our solidarity and Narsina Data College uh, the science club has done a very good thing in this regard to uh, to arrange this program on this special day I'm thankful to the Honorable Principal Madam and all the staff members of this 
college and especially my friend Subroto Kumabasu for giving me an opportunity for this particular pro program. As Dr. Boxy in the, in the initial talk has rightly told us and depicted the various ways, the scientific aspects of this particular HIV positive and AIDS. So we have learned a lot from his talk. So I'm not actually repeating those things. The scientific aspects are very important part. We must know the science in order to combat this particular HIV, we must know the science of it definitely. And he has rightly told about the high risk group people, mode of transmission, the immunological aspects, and all other aspects dealing with the science of AIDS. Naturally, uh, in the present scenario, in the present context, global context, more important is, is the, the social science aspects of AIDS. That is how we are actually now living in a pandemic world. Before this COVID-19 scenario, before the early January of 2020, very few of us are giving attention on pandemic. How the AIDS pandemic for about almost 40 years is spreading and looming large on the global context. But we this COVID-19, like many other important lesson, has given us also a lesson about the pandemic. We are now all aware of what is pandemic and how is it's affecting the every nook and corner of the globe and how it's affecting various aspects of life and community. Naturally, we can say that we are in a situation of pandemic within pandemic. Obviously, in this present context, we must have to go for a holistic approach in dealing with different program problems of the earth, may it be the, the AIDS, may it be this coronavirus, may it be the issues of climate changes. In all the cases, the all round aspects is very, very important. And there lies the importance of social science in dealing with this particular day, in dealing with this particular topic. And rightly, the United Nations are giving call, clarion calls on different aspects of AIDS on different day, year. And these themes are mostly related, encircling on science and social science based. As you all know, in a post pandemic scenario, we are talking about few buzzwords, including the importance of communication skill, including the importance of creativity, innovations and, and experimentation, and of course, collaboration. So these four C's are very important and getting more importance since the outbreak of coronavirus. And these four C's are equally important for management of AIDS, for the reduction of AIDS in a in a in a global base basis and while doing that we have definite programs we have definite goals on it say for example from 200, 2000 to 2015 millennium development goals were prevailing in our 
uh, on behalf of the United Nations to tackle the various emerging problem. And from 2015 onward till 2030, we are under the auspices of the global goals. That is the 17 goals that encircling us sustainable development goals. So all these goals are also very much involved in this program of elimination of AIDS or reduction of AIDS and management of AIDS. And naturally, we have to take care of these prevailing goals. We have to use, utilize these prevailing goals in tackling this pandemic. And as a result, these goals are very important and they are interlinked in this regard. If we think about AIDS and also about this novel coronavirus, we can definitely talk about the concept that is the genosis, that is how this pathogen, this virus, is trans is jumping from non-human host to human host. Maybe that is one of the one of the probable cause of transmission. Say in case of AIDS, the simian immunodeficiency virus from chimpanzee may have have a zoonotic effect on human. And in case of this coronavirus, as we are discussing nowadays, that maybe there may be certain sea animals, and from that maybe an intermediate pangolin. So that may be the way. So there is a big question that the role of human being is equally important as more and more human encroachment is taking place on natural environment we are destroying the habitat of the of the wild animals more and more we are nearer to the close or we are to the, to the closest proximity of these animals and this loss of habitat loss of biodiversity can well be one of the factors which encourages more and more genosis and genotic diseases, many of, may, of them may well lead to such pandemic situation. So there is a similarity in COVID-19 and, and this AIDS in this regard, probably. So if I can allow to share screen, uh, let's see. Yes. Is it visible? I believe. Huh? Hello? I think Hello? So it is visible. Okay, thank you. So, so as you see this, your your flyer itself showing that this is of course a pandemic as because this epidemic is prevailing all over the world. And Dr. Bokshi has already talked about this red ribbon, the solidarity ribbon, and whosoever may be, we must hold this ribbon, this solidarity ribbon, ribbon togetherly. AIDS is not be managed through individual effort or effort of a particular country or particular person or particular group. We need support from the community in a global basis. That's why it is most important. And this year theme is of course, end equalities, end AIDS, end pandemics, inequalities. So this inequality is the key word for this year topic, this year theme. So you must know that inequality, that disparity, especially in the 
social sector, economic sector is already looming large throughout the globe. But this COVID-19 has introduced a, that introduced more inequal parameters in these inequalities and that's why AIDS control, AIDS management becoming more difficult. So as I've told you, already told about that this day is marked as a awareness day. Probably in 1983, the doctors have discovered this virus, so about 40 years. And in each day, approximately 850 children becoming infected with HIV and approximately 330 ch children died from AIDS related causes. It's not only because of the virulence of the AIDS, but more because of inadequate access to HIV prevention, care and treatment. That's the, there lies the important, inadequate access to HIV prevention, care and treatment. And we have to close this gap. We have to close this gap. This disparity, this inadequate access must be reduced. So in Indian context also, the scenario is, is not very bright. Estimated 23.48 lakh people living with HIV in India. Maharashtra is the capital of HIV in India. And there are so many AIDS related death. And of course this infection and death more than 50%, around 54% are children and women. So that's to be a point to be noted. And we are, we are positive in that sense that through various effort, we are managing to close down this gap that the infection, infection as well as the death have reduced at least by half by five years and we believe we have definite programs and definite targets say about 2030 2030 we are targeting about 95 percent prevention and reduction of deaths so that's more important and developing countries third world countries poor countries are mostly getting more vulnerable so naturally everyone has a right to health and while everyone has a right to health we cannot discriminate people on the basis of this unequal resource partitioning over the world so this is what is the target. By 2020, it was a target was that 90-90-90. That is achieving what 90% of the people okay living with HIV must know their HIV status. 90% of the people. Who, who are aware of their HIV status must get treatment. And 90% of the people who are on treatment must reduce or suppress their viral load. That was the target. It was not being achieved. More so in the last 20 months, there is a big setback. And that also the new target of 95% by 2000, 2030 is also in jeopardy because of this prevailing pandemic, corona pandemic. But the magic is this antiretroviral therapy, which was not very prominent even a few years back. And with the introduction of this retroviral thera antiretroviral therapy, which reduces the amount of HIV in the body, 
reduces the risk of HIV transmission. Dr. Bakshi has rightly told about this vertical transmission. And in that particular case, from mother to fetus, it is a big success. Prevents HIV from advancing to AIDS. That is again a big success. You are through this antiretroviral therapy, we are converting AIDS as a chronic disease rather than a fatal disease. We are improving our life's quality and also improving our life expectancy within the HIV positive people. As you all know, HIV positive doesn't mean AIDS. When this HIV positive people advances to the symptomatic phases with different, we, we can have AIDS related complex or other form, then that, but this antiretroviral therapy can very well hold this advancement of, and transmission, uh, transfer of this HIV positive people into AIDS and also to a certain extent protect the immune system. So this is the magic by which we are getting positive result in a global basis. So as we have told that this most important is to break the cycle of inequalities in the sub-Saharan African region or in poorer countries, mostly the children and the women suffers a lot. And they, this is also in hands in glove with the this inequalities of or suffering of the women more they are suffering and they cannot raise their voices against sexual assaults more they are vulnerable to this particular aids we need to have antiretroviral theory uh, therapy we should have close contact with the doctors and uh, and follow the advices this balanced diet and nutritious diet is a, again a very important thing for HIV positive people. There lies again an impact of this inequality. In Though we have a sustainable development goal of no hunger, but poverty and also no poverty, zero poverty, yet in this world, there is a big, big gap and balanced and nutritious diet access to balance and nutritious diet is a dream for a vast majority of the people and of which if they are hiv positive this inequal access to balanced diet and nutritious diet will aggravate the situation that's why we are talking about closing the gap we are talking about to reduce these inequalities exercise and keeping fit this is another so we must be act, have an active life and this is again very important we need support from each and every corner we must be empathetic and we must have a as a, a my ribbon red ribbon we i have mentioned about the the importance of community serve community different stakeholders in management of age. So these are all equally important. So HIV treatment is very important. Preventive measures, prophylactic measures are equally important. And in COVID-19 situation, as I've told you, in COVID-19 is aggravating age. So to prevent COVID-19 exposure is equally important. And for that purpose, getting vaccination is a very important feature but the point is that even in covid-19 vaccine you are seeing that only only very few affluent countries are getting more than 70 or 80% people gets vaccinated 
the situation is very very bleak in the poorer countries even they are not getting a single dose a vast majority of the population so that is equally important mental health as you know mental health well being is a very important feature and in age also we have a lot of mental health difficulties anxiety trauma mood swings and those mental health problem is further aggravated because of this covid pandemic right from the adolescent to the young adult and also to the adult so that is to be taken care of support one another is another big issue i have already mentioned about the zoonosis and the our role in it so this corona virus that's long term impact could lead to more new hiv infection because the, this is a tremendous onslaught on the whole healthcare system we are talking about comorbidities in a case of comorbidity people are more vulnerable to corona virus but also because of this corona virus covid situation many people are deprived of getting their health care and hiv positive people are no exception to it so this this is also a big setback so we need to tackle this covid-19 situation in a more wise manner so we have to behave responsibly in terms of vaccination in terms of physical distancing and also in terms of this wearing of mask not only for preventing corona virus but also to to get give a support to our doctors to our healthcare system which often gets overwhelmed and crashes so that needs to be taken care of so as it is been told that everyone no matter who they are or where they live should have access to hiv services during covid-19 so the aids managerial team has rightly told that this is very important that though there is a prevailing covid-19 pandemic but that shouldn't prevent the hiv positive people to get treatment to get management otherwise that will lead to more death more infection more vulnerability and more difficult situation you can see the disparity see this sub saharan region the african region 22.8 million people whereas in the in the developed countries it is less lesser in number so you can we can easily understand that how inequal resource can well lead to not only in terms of resource in terms of health in terms of education in terms of economic growth everything is related to aids management and the out for outcome is otherwise like this disparity is what we are noticing here as if the same situation we are talking about digital divides in the urban scenario we are taking online classes we are exposed to online classes but in the rural setup how can you manage that so that disparity is a glaring example likewise in this resource or other economic and social disparities is a big setback for aids control i mentioned about this emotional and mental stress so sadness fear anger grief and reduced social support isolation stigmatization you can remember the condition of 
the the covid situation in the first wave in the beginning in your in your locality in your hamlet even if you have an aids patient we are scary about telling it to your nearest friend because that's the stigmatization everybody are stigmatizing it but when the cases are increasing nowadays such stigmatization is less but unfortunately in case of hiv this is still prevailing very much we need to break this stigma so eliminating the stigma discrimination and harassment of hiv people positive people is a very important managerial aspect to be deal with so about 40 years we are battling with it without a vaccine so far as you have seen that there are a lot of mutations coming on in in the in the corona covid cases casting a, a what we may call it very question mark on the efficacy of the vaccine as new new strains are coming mutations are going on so that is one important thing that is one signature of retroviruses or rna viruses where they are more unstable and more exposed to mutation that's why that is one of the major reason of not getting a vaccine in aids so far moreover even after initial treatment the viral dna which are produced from reverse transcription tend to remain in the body for a very long period of time thereby preventing the efficacy of the vaccine so we need to have anti retroviral medication as i've told you that is the prevailing that is the the most important thing it can be as prevention for people with hiv it can be post exposure prevention prophylaxis or it can be pre exposure prophylaxis in all the cases retroviruses anti retroviral therapy is to be given this is another very big issue we are as since aids are in many of the cases related to sexual transmission as dr bokshi has rightly told so it's a taboo and we the parents the teachers are shy of disclosing this but we need we are very comfortable when talk about our different body parts hands legs nose head but still now we are shy about talking about gonads or other things so that needs to be done very judiciously but we need to must need the to break the cycle of silence about sex and sexuality as because the adolescents because of their and young adults because of their their experimentation power may fall prey to this thing we must give them the proper knowledge if we don't give the proper knowledge import proper knowledge then they will not be able to take the correct decision and you know every decision ha have its has its own consequences so if we cannot take the correct decision it may have lifelong negative consequences so better we should have em we should have empowered adolescent and empowered young adults regarding sex and sexuality they must be equipped with information about this online risk of danger of social networking which is again a very prominent issue and falling prey to sexual inequalities or rather that so this is a common scenario very often without knowing the science 
they fall prey to this social media which need to be be taken care of by having this type of webinars and counseling in the college and schools to have a safe passage of this vibrant adolescent and the young adult age there are various ways various good books on it these are some i have mentioned by which we can judiciously introduce this topic to the young adults so that they can they can impart actual knowledge they become empowered and they will not fall prey to this type of stds these are some of the beautiful references from where we can introduce this to our counseling clubs in the schools and colleges as because it's a very taboo topic we are often frightened to shy about telling it to our students to our to our child to our son and daughter regarding sex but we can have make it with different metaphors like birds and bees birds lay eggs and these eggs are the precursor of life and bees are transmitting pollinating agents which pollinate that can be considered with our fertilization concept this way wisely we can introduce these things to our but we have to introduce there is no doubt about it so as i have told you the sustainable development goals so for reducing the inequality we have to reduce this no poverty we have follow this goal number 1 end of poverty poverty is a big feature for inequality good health and well being is the goal number 3 his it must be they are prevailing for all individual in a global scenario quality education is equally important this is a very very important feature goal number 5 gender equality as more and more women and girls are suffering and that they are how as i told we are on 54% are living with hiv are women and girls so that must be taken care of decent work and economic growth it's equally important goal number 10 this reduced inequalities that the our this year theme topic is almost based on this so this prevailing sustainable development goals we must work together and goal number 17 that is the partnership that is in all such aspect partnership is very important partnering to end the aids epidemic biomedical research vaccine research public health so this global solidarity is a must and this shared responsibility can only help us to avoid this here you see a story of mangal singh that ngo paloi in maharashtra they are taking care of hiv positive children so such in if one individual can show this courage we should also think of such endeavor to ng to governmental and non governmental as effort to to deal with the minus of aids we must be very much careful about the myths and misconception for dispelling myths and misconception regarding aids and allied group we must have better sexuality education in schools and colleges i have already mentioned about the covid-19 pandemic and how it's important so ending disparities needs radical changes and this is political economic and social policies must preserve everyone's right especially the disadvantaged and the marginalized group 
and we must compel our leaders, the global leaders, the national leaders, to think in this line. Instead of thinking in terms of religion, in terms of caste and creed, in our age management program. You see here, the scenario is not all bleak. See, it is definitely in a positive way. In 2001, people living with HIV and antiretroviral therapy is 1 million. It's 15 million in 2015. And the target is two, by 2030, it should be everyone. New HIV infection, 3 million in 2001 reduced to 2, 2 million in 2014 and the target is 0.2 million by 2030. AIDS related death 2 million in 2004 and 1.2 million in 2014 and its target is 0.2 million. Investment is also increasing that's very important. 4.9 US billion US dollar in 2001 to 21.7 billion US dollar in 2015. So this investment is very important to fight against AIDS and other such pandemic. New infection among children. Also, you can see how it is decreasing. Awareness among people also decreasing. Target is 90% by 2030. Number of pills. This is a very, very big issue. CER on an average, you have to take eight pills per day in 2001 to manage AIDS. Now it is around one pill per day. The target is one pill per three months. Test, time taken for test, that is C. Average three days, it was there in 2001. Now in 2014, it is around 30 minutes. And in, by 2030, by three minutes, you can detect your HIV status. So, these are very important things. We must take in, we must be aware of this social implication. So, we can say about this, this year theme is very, very important. And inequalities, if you can end that, you can go towards ending AIDS and pandemic. These themes are on the same line. In 2020, we talk about global solidarity and the bouncing back resilient services to tackle AIDS. In 2019, we talk about the importance of community to make the difference. All stakeholders must come together to fight against AIDS. In 2018, we talk about that knowing your status, whether you are HIV positive or not, is very important. And for that reason, you see, we have seen that how that time is gradually in a, in a reducing frame. It may take around three days long back to 30 minutes nowadays. In 2017, it was about the health right. My health is my right. So everybody's right is a fundamental right of everybody. There should not be any rich, poor discrimination. There shouldn't be any discrimination in haves and have nots. So good health and well-being is a very important feature in this regard. In 2016, it's worth hands up for HIV prevention. We talk about gender equality. We talk about viral suppression. We talk about testing and we talk about investment. So you see in coronavirus also, this is equally, equally important. The same thing. We have to suppress the viral load. We have to, we have to go for equality in, in terms of gender. We have, to, we have to stress upon more and more testing. And we have to invest a lot for research, for vaccine generation, for management, for economic rehabilitation, all this. So the future is not all that bleak. And even in the sub-Saharan 
reason also the situation is better what is it 15 years back political leadership domestic investment international solidarity technology community local production various things social protection women empowerment all these are pay us giving positive feedback positive impact on the aids management system and before this we have that millennium development goal where also aids this combating goal number 6 combating hiv aids malaria and other diseases were given priority life skills as i have told you this decision making coping up with mental stresses and emotions empathy collaboration interpersonal skills all these will be very important in a pandemic scenario in fighting pandemic togetherly and as i've told you not is what it's not a one man job all stakeholders all doors to be remain open to fight against this pandemic so we can we can fight we can do we can manage to evade aids and dignity and respect without stigma and discrimination will be the key words in this so women and girls can play a very vital role in this regards because they are suffering a lot and if we can manage to reduce the discrepancy that will be a great thing and never give up never stop believing that should be our mantra partnering as i have told you is a big issue closing the gap so that no one is left behind in terms of caste creed religion and economy so with this few word i congratulate the science club of narasimhadatta college for arranging such a very important seminar for a very important talk on this particular day thank you for your patient hearing thank you thank you sir for the illuminating speech we really got to learn a lot from it now we welcome our special guest mrs georgia maneta she is a state primary school teacher of english she holds a ba in english language and lit literature from the aristotle university of thessaloniki greece and an ma in literature in english from dalarna university sweden she also works as an oral assessor of english for the state certificate in greece and an adult examination board she is a volunteer in yfu that is youth for understanding and a member of the executive board of the gmrt that is global matrix readers theater she is a newly appointed ambassador of eat winning a european platform where schools from all over europe cooperate on various projects she is interested in theater cinema reading and educational technology and likes meeting people from all over the world thank you ma'am for joining us and i would like to invite miss maneta for her speech uh good evening since i think it's quite late in india good afternoon from greece uh, we are 3 hours and a half behind you uh, first of all i would like to say that i feel honored and happy to be here uh, among you and i would like uh, to thank first of all uh, my friend uh, professor sabia sachi for inviting me here uh, although i didn't have the chance to uh, attend the whole event um, as i was uh, busy teaching however i had uh, the honor and uh, the happiness to uh, hear him say a few things and actually i find what i have to say a bit trivial and rather boring but anyway i'll do my best so today while i was uh, thinking about what i should talk about 
I received the, the usual um, email I receive every day from Yahoo News. And the first uh, piece of news that was at, on top of the uh, electronic newspaper, let's say, uh, wrote AIDS timeline four decades, but still no silver bullet, which means that for four decades, people have been suffering from AIDS, but no one has managed to eliminate it. So let me give you a few things about the AIDS and then I'll uh, go on. So the first alert of uh, a lethal virus uh, existing in our lives um, took place back in 1981, just this, a lethal virus. The term AIDS appears in 1982. In 1983, some French researchers identified the virus together with a US scientist in 1984 who finds exactly the same virus. So in 1986, this virus is officially uh, known as HIV, which is the human immunodeficiency virus. Uh, a lot of medication uh, has been taking place, a lot of uh, experiments and a lot of efforts to try to eliminate, to try to cure victims. Um, a lot of changes uh, in the doctor's prescriptions. However, uh, no matter how much progress uh, the scientific community has made, COVID-19 came and indeed absorbed all funds and medical staff. And AIDS victims nowadays are being denied entrance into health facilities because there are no health facilities available to them. We are fighting for COVID. Um, in 1988, the World Health Organization decides that December 1st should be called AIDS Day in order to raise awareness about AIDS. Awareness. And this makes me wonder, are we aware? We still tend to look down on people who suffer from AIDS. We still believe that we might contract the disease, uh, not only if we hug them, but even if we touch them. And I remember back in 1996, and if you have the chance, please go and watch it. There was a film called Philadelphia with Tom Hanks, who actually got the Oscar award. And it actually touched very sensitive chords about the life of AIDS victims. Have a look at this film and you'll see what I mean. So awareness. I'm not sure we're aware about, we're not aware of uh, how AIDS um, uh, victims suffer, how much. We still consider homosexuals inferior. We consider them not worthy. But we are forgetting that these are choices. These are natural factors. And these are, and these are, and these are. We should stop put labels to people. We should stop put labels to humans. We should not categorize people according to their color to their religion, to their sexual orientation, to their ethnicity, to their preferences. I would never say he's a Muslim, he's a Christian, he's a better person. I would never say he's a black person, he's inferior to me. We are all humans. We are all humans and we are all weak and we are all strong in our own special ways. I'm good at something, I'm weak at I'm something else. I'm sure everyone who is listening to me right now is good at something and I'm weak at it. Never look down on me though, and I will never look down on you though, because we are humans and no one is perfect. So what must we do to try and raise awareness? What must we do to bridge this gap as Sachi as uh, mentioned? As parents, as educators, we should educate children on how to protect themselves against sexually transmitted diseases because this is a reality this is a fact we should protect them we should inform them we should educate them uh, on not taking uh, too fast decisions into tasting love without fully knowing about it uh, because experimenting is not a very good idea in this field however apart from the medical side, let's say, we should always educate our children 
on the fact that diversity makes our world a better and more colorful place. Diversity is here and should stay. We just need to learn how to embrace it, how not to be afraid of it, how to become better people together with it. So for decades, and still no equity and equality for AIDS victims. But we are people and we are optimistic and we are going to give them what they deserve. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring speech. And now we are going to conduct the question answer session or the interactive session conducted by our respected Professor Shampa Mondol. Ma'am, please continue. Thank you, Debushmita. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. A good evening, very good evening to all present in today's webinar. To begin with our today's interactive session, our first question uh, to Dr. Bokshi is from Professor <laughs> It is from uh, the question is from the Professor Ongshuman Shorkar. The question is Can anyone get HIV from getting a tattoo if the person who gives you the tattoo uses the same needle that has been used on HIV infected person? Certainly, uh, needle brick or needle use, repeated needle use is a non-sexual way to transmit HIV. But we also should remember that not only HIV, but also even in uh, many folks, more risk uh, to transmit hepatitis B and C also. So a needle can transmit HIV if it is already used in an HIV patient. But actually, uh, HIV virus doesn't last long. So anyway, we must uh, take universal precaution not to use the same needle for another patient. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Bokshi. Our next question is from Professor Umshuman Shorkar again. Is HIV asymptomatic for many years? Yes, I have already mentioned that HIV can remain asymptomatic after getting infection. A person can remain asymptomatic for long period. That is a silent period or latent period. And there are other long term non progresses where we have found that if you maintain a healthy lifestyle with uh, good nutrients, then we can achieve a disease free period for a long time till his uh, viral load gets increased and CD4 increases. So a person can remain asymptomatic. That is the uh, reason why we advocate uh, uh, checking blood products and before any surgery or before any uh, medical procedure like endoscopy or colonoscopy, whatever, where you come in contact with uh, body fluid, we advocate doing, I mean, I mean, it is essential to do the viral serology, HIV, hepatitis B and hepatitis C before any medical procedure. Or if you get admitted to any hospital, they will certainly do that test uh, to actually detect the asymptomatic people. Uh, moving over to a last question uh, raised by our science club secretary, uh, Professor Shubrata Boshu. Why effective vaccines are not yet prepared still today? Uh, well, I, I believe that uh, Professor Shobosha ji will better uh, answer this question. Uh, but I can say that uh, uh, in a nutshell that HIV virus remained dormant for a long, long period of time. And the pharmaceutical companies are also not funding so much. <coughs> the funds are being diverted to some other place. Uh, this might be the reason, but I believe that Dr. Shobosha ji should answer this. Yes, uh, he, yes, he has already lightened, yes, of course. Uh, lightened. Any, yes, yes, because of, for any uh, vaccination, yes, yes, for, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Boxy, for any vaccination, the pharmaceutical company 
their prime motto is their profit whatsoever we call it about social responsibility or like that and uh, and vaccine comes with a big deal of research and funding is a very important source in this regard that is one very important point and number two as i have told you and the proboxy has rightly mentioned that within the body the viral dna which are product of this rna remain in the body very for a very considerable really high period of time in a latent condition and it's very difficult and that's why the it may be well be that this cost effectiveness for eradicating that will be very high and third of all that there is also a chance of very rapid mutation to to avoid the vaccine efficacy as we are talking about nowadays we are skeptic about this coronavirus also so there were there are multiple factors which can lead to still not that is a big issue of vaccine efficacy even uh, treatment was a distant dream as uh, rightly told by dr boxy that previously even 20 years back we only heard about zidovudine as one of the major drug and only drug but nowadays because of this uh, because of this funding and because of this research we are getting aware of more and more effective anti retroviral therapies and that leads to the statistics i have shown you that leads to a positive scenario in re reducing the viral load in reducing the burden etc etc and uh, what dr boxy has rightly told that you can improve your quality of life even with hiv if you are ex you, you have a very decent lifestyle and in that case nutrition is a very important factor and there lies the importance of eradicating these inequalities if we are not having that purchasing power if you don't have that power how can you improve your quality of life even under such condition and that's why the onset is also like very variable this window period varies for people to people this latin period in community to community in and so that is again very important that's why this this year theme is very very important to re reduce the gap to reduce the inequality to have access of all for everyone so that we can have a better management for hiv aids thank you uh, one thing i want to add actually uh, that okay uh, the hiv vaccine is not yet approved whatever uh, research is going on some research must be going on somewhere in the world but an hiv affected individual or uh, um, an hiv affected individual must be given vaccines against hepatitis a b and that uh, influenza pneumococcal these vaccines are important to uh, get rid of or to control the opportunistic infections which actually the cause of death in case of hiv thank you exactly exactly that opportunistic infection to be should be minimized right mm -hmm. We are grateful to all our speakers for sharing their valuable time with us and enlightening us with all the information. Now we move on to program part two, where our respected professor Kumar is going to present some posters and slogans made by the students of our college from different departments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
So I am now presenting the posters and slogan made by our students. So these will be visible in the screen. Is it visible? No, sir. Okay, let me check. Hope it is visible now, right? Yes, sir. Okay.
so that's all so thanks to our students for making these uh, posters and slogans beautifully so that thank you my dear students thank you sir as we reach the end of today's program i would like to invite our honorable iqac coordinator sir dr kundal chattopadhyay for a vote of thanks thank you devushmita am i reaching clear to all of you yes sir okay thank you so we did have a fantastic evening we are so very enlightened through the lectures of our invited speakers and of course our students having presented so very beautifully slogans and posters on this occasion let me take this opportunity to extend sincere thanks to our invited speakers dr bokshi and dr mazumdar and of course i should also thank a lot to our respected special guest having joined this occasion from a distant part of the globe thank you ma'am and of course i must thank our science club for having observed this occasion so effectively in such an organized manner we must also thank all our iqac members all the team members of the technical team having lent a lot of support we should also thank our students having joined this session as part of the audience and also actively participating by drawing posters and writing slogans all the participants they have encouraged us um and of course principal madam has presumably left this program for some urgent piece of business i should also thank her for extending all kinds of support to us so it has been a very illuminating evening since a uh, principal madam is not there who usually closes the session on such webinars uh, i would call it a very good evening and end the session at this point thank you all good night